you've had a lot of fights, you've had a lot of big fights, but UFC 300 for the BMF belt against someone like Max Holloway, this one must feel pretty special. They all feel special. It's um, such a great uh, little adventure that I put myself on, you know, a long time ago when I chose to, you know, take this path. I uh, never would have thought it would have led me to UFC 300, but here we are. You mentioned ahead of this fight that, respectfully, you would like to finish Max, but maybe not put him out cold, just finally be the first person to sort of crack that chin we talk about so much. For him, do you think he's going to have to have put on a lot of size to be able to match you for power to keep himself in there, or do you think he can come at this fight in other ways and find success? Man, it's a lot of what-ifs and what I think. So I don't know. I don't know. You know, I love getting in there and finding out. Um, you know, I'll know early if he's punching hard enough for me to take chances or be more cautious. You know, I'll find that out early. And I think uh, this is very different than the time he fought Poirier, as that was a late replacement. I think he's had this whole camp, you know, being able to keep and maintain that weight. And I do think he's going to be as big as me and as strong as me. Yeah. You mentioned he's quick to disregard that fight with Dustin for the reason you just said. Do you even look at that fight and think, well, there are things I can take from that? Or do you have to think, no, no, no I can't really relate that max to this one? If, if I'm watching that fight, it has nothing to do with the size or, or anything like that. It's all about technique, you know, and I can find his technique in, in all of his fights. All of them, you know, he's a very different fighter from fight to fight. Just as all of us are, you know, we're all constantly making adjustments. And, you know, I won't be sure which Max I'm going to fight until that bell rings. What would it mean to you to be the first guy to drop him? Yeah, it would, him? it would mean a lot. You know, um, I have 25 wins, 19 knockouts. Um, I've really taken pride in that, you know, since the beginning of my career. And, you know, to be the first one, I like being first. So, yeah, I'm ready. What are the stakes for, uh, in this fight for you? Obviously, there's a BMF belt on the line, right? But we're hearing talks that maybe Dustin could be fighting for the lightweight title next. Are you even thinking about that, or do you just have to think, hey? No, I know um, with the win here, I fight for the belt. I know with the loss here, that all goes away. So that's, that's what I'm fighting for. Is there a chance, if Islam were to fight in June, you could end up being called to fight back in Abu Dhabi? And is that something you'd even consider? Uh, I don't play what ifs, but um, you, know, you don't pass up a championship opportunity. You know, I do want my time. I do think. June would probably be impossible for me as every time I fight is a traumatic life experience and I need to go home, I need to, you know, unwind, take care of my body, take care of my head. But I have coaches and a manager that ultimately make those decisions. So if they say go, I go. This one right here. Uh, throughout media day, uh, the general consensus is that no one else is competing for fight of the night amongst the fighters. They're all like, we have to get a, a performance bonus because Justin and Max are fighting on this card. Yeah. Like, do you kind of take pride in that, that like even your fellow fighters are like, we're yeah. not even going to try for this? Yeah, I mean, um, having the respect of your peers is something I think we all, you know, shoot for. Um, not just that, but the respect of the UFC to give me this opportunity. Every time you see someone in this thing, you only see the Gaethje versus Holloway thing on the television. So it looks like it's the main event. Well, kind of going off of that, was there any chance that you would have just been the actual main event uh, before they added Alex and Jamal? Wrong, wrong dude. I don't know. Um, what do you make of the, uh, the custom fight kits? I love it. Yeah, they called me. They said, what do you want? I said, I want to represent the United States of America. Um, if I ever had a chance, that's what I asked for a long time ago. You know, I didn't want, um, I didn't want to go full Apollo Creed because I, I don't like to be flashy. Um, and, yeah, I mean, anytime I can represent my country, you know, this is such a worldwide sport and not a lot of people truly represent this, this country. And, you know, I'm, I'm that guy. Speaking of the custom shorts, Max had input on his design on the floor. Did you have any input on yours or was it just you told him, hey, I want this, this and this? And I said I wanted to look like a U.S. flag and then I sent him a picture of, a, you know, those shades, those colors, black and gray. You know, I wasn't looking for anything special. I don't need to be shiny or flashy. I do my talking with my fists. Fair, fair enough. And there's also a footage of you uh, celebrating Dustin Poirier's win over Benoit Saint-Denis when he got the knockout. Is that a guy that, no matter what time you're in, is he, he's going to be like one of those guys you always have respect for in and out of the cage? Yeah, I mean, for one, I'm always going to cheer for my fellow Americans, you know, and especially um, I love to see these vets and us old guys holding off this young, these young, young lions. They're coming for us, but the longer we can hold them off, the better for me, the better for all of us. The longer I stick around. 
Justin, just curious, uh, after we spoke the other day, a couple of the things were, you know, maybe Mark Coleman wrapping the belt around the winner of this and some $300,000 bonuses. Any word on either of those things might happen from what you've heard? Oh, I haven't asked. I won't ask nobody. I think the $300,000 thing is a little bit, you know, a little bit far-fetched, but I think $100,000 is, is probably hopefully going to happen. They did it for UFC 100. Can't see why, you know. We're all making a lot more money now than from UFC 100, so I think... Uh, I think 100 G's is good for every finish on the card. Justin, down here to your right, um, you fought a lot of high caliber fighters throughout your career. Where does Max Holloway rank in that list? Um, I mean, Tony Ferguson, Dustin Poirier, Cowboy Cerrone. I mean, these guys are all, you know, future Hall of Famers. So it's huge. It's huge for my legacy. It's huge for my resume. Um, you know, I've been watching this guy. I'm older than him, but I was watching him way before I ever thought about being in the UFC. And yeah, this is the guy that I, I looked up to. So it's cool to see where how far I've come and where hard work will get you. And I remember after your interim title win, you didn't really want anything to do with the belt, but with this BMF belt, not to say that you're parading around everywhere with you, but obviously you hold it in, seemingly in high regard. Would, yeah. would that be a fair assessment? Uh, again, I think it's awesome. You know, I wouldn't, if I didn't have the respect of the company that I fought for, I would not be in this position. That's what I'm most proud of, you know, and also the fans. The fans respect it. The fans in turn respect me. Um, it adds a little bit more of a spectacle to my fights. And this is the entertainment business. So, you know, I like, I like that much. Thank you. Over here, Justin. Um, back to the shorts. Do you think Bryce Mitchell should be upset or proud for paving the way of fighting for custom shorts and how easily you guys got them for this card? I don't think it was easy. I've been working a long time for this. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Sure, I'll give him credit. I like it. I like his camel shorts. Justin, you win on Saturday night in spectacular fashion right over here. And... To your right, right here. Justin, you went on Saturday night in spectacular fashion, and for some reason they don't honor the title belt next. What is it, just next man up, or is there someone in mind? No, there's, like there's going to be two contenders coming out of this, this fight night. You know, this, this pay-per-view, the winner of Saruki and Oliveira is going to be a contender, and the winner of the Holloway and myself is going to be a contender. I believe Makachev is going to fight at least twice this year, and so I think we'll both fight him. Are you looking forward to any of the fights in the card besides yours? Is there I mean, I'm a huge fan of the sport. You know, I wish, I don't wish, I'm glad I'm on it. But if I wasn't on the card, I would certainly be in attendance. And there would be, I love fights. I love fighting and I love watching fights. I love the atmosphere. Um, you know, I love that um, people understand what they're going to get when I walk out and the atmosphere kind of changes. I can feel the intensity shift. And, you know, I love being that. Justin, have you gotten out to the uh, the Vegas links? Golf? A specific golf club? I don't know. Are no, I played uh, Cascada and I played Rio Seco while I was here last uh, Thursday and then Sunday. And then, unfortunately, I have to do a bunch of interviews so I can't golf these how'd, days. How'd you hit it? Not bad. I shot a 93 and a 90. Uh, my swing is disgusting, but, you know, I shoot well. Excellent. Obviously, adding Max to that stack list of opponents you have faced in your career. And I know you want the crack at the title next, but before you do hang it up, whenever that is, is there any other guy you want to face and say, yeah, I faced him and added him to my stack list of opponents? I'm a quarter mile at a time kind of guy. Um, I do not look too far ahead. I honestly have no clue what the future holds. Um, I don't usually plan on being alive the day after my fight, so hopefully I'm there on Sunday.